Welcome back to the Atlanta Falcons franchise, everyone. I'm your host, Husker Eurocat, and we're looking forward to a big test for our Falcons. In-division rival Tampa Bay has made the trip to Atlanta for an early season clash with a Falcon squad that has yet to lose a game this season, even through preseason play. On the other hand, the Bucks have yet to win a game, and this week the GOAT was exceptionally vocal about making sure they have a winning mindset going into this game. Why is that such a big deal? Well, yeah. Tampa Bay is 0-2 on this young season, and nobody in the Buccaneer organization is very happy about that. Tom Brady is at the head of that list. Two keys for Atlanta are that they need to establish a solid passing attack since running the ball doesn't seem to be a priority for them. Along with that, the defense, which has the number four ranking in the NFL, has to be prepared to stop Brady from doing, well, what he's been doing so well for years now. now the Bucks, well, the key is playing with confidence. They aren't doing anything particularly bad this season. They've just played a little flat so far. Can they change that today against our Falcons? Let's find out as we get set for the Falcons and Buccaneers here on the MMC Broadcasting Network. Jerry on Ely is back deep for the Falcons and Jason Myers gets this underway here in Atlanta. Ely brings it out of the end zone and can't even make it to the 20 yard line, just shy of the 19. Corral throws and it's complete to the 35 yard line, Kyle Pitts. Now with Cook the lone setback. It's a play action pass, a shovel pass to Pitts and he gets a nice gain pushed out of bounds at the 43. Now out of the shotgun, Corral throws incomplete and that ends the Falcons opening drive, a punt and Stonehouse has the ball check up and Tampa Bay has it at the six yard line. Now Brady back to pass, can't find anybody open, throws it out of bounds. Third and 10 now, Brady out of the end zone, throws out to Scotty Miller at the 20 and he can't hang on to it. And after a very poor punt, well, the Falcons have it at the midfield on a second and 10 pass. It's complete to Geronimo Allison. Now third and two. Corral is back to pass. Oh, and he is sacked. Joe Tryon Shoyanka has taken over the edge rusher's responsibilities after Jason Pierre-Paul went to the Chiefs this year and he is an outstanding edge rusher. Justin Pugh couldn't handle him on that play, and I don't know if he, he might be an issue for the left side of that offensive line going forward. Jared Reed with a huge sack on Brady takes him all the way back to the 14-yard line. So third and 17 and an incompletion ends the Tampa Bay Drive. From the 47, Cook takes it outside to the right, has lots of room inside Tampa Bay territory and out of bounds for a 27 yard scamper. Now third and six from the 22, Corral back to pass, completes it for a first down to Kyle Pitts at the 10 yard line. Now on second and 11. Again to Pitts inside the 10. And they give him forward progress to almost the six yard line. 
Corral back to pass again, throws into the end zone to nobody. So out comes Cade York, puts up a 23 yard field goal and it is good. Atlanta is on the board three to nothing. Now Brady under center, a play action pass all alone in the backfield forever and throws downfield complete to Mike Evans and out of bounds inside Atlanta territory for a 34 yard reception. The 39, back to pass again. And this time he is sacked. Taken down by John Kaminsky for a 13 yard loss. Now up another pass and this one's complete. Mike Evans makes the grab and he's inside the 42. Third and 13. Pass is knocked away. Foye Aluakin knocks it away intended for Mike Evans. After a Falcons three and out, Tampa Bay has it again at the 36. This is complete out to Williams. And that was an eight yard pickup. Third and two. Ball handed off to Fournette. He has a big hole and inside the 40 yard line before he is stopped by Mike Hughes. Tampa Bay is on the move. Another handoff to Fournette inside the 35 and tackled at the 32. Third and four. The pass, Brady to Gronkowski and out of bounds at the 21 yard line. Another first down for the Bucks. Hand off to Fournette up the middle. He gets inside the 20 yard line and that brings us to the end of quarter number one with your Falcons ahead three to nothing. Now from the 17. Pass complete to Fournette on the left side. That brings out Jason Meyer for a 30 yard attempt and it is up and good. So just into the second quarter and Tampa Bay ties this ball game up. From the 25, Corral throws complete. Christian Kirk on the sideline and that's the first down. Now from the 39, give is to Cook. He bounces his way out past the 45 to the 46 for a seven yard gain. Corral throws complete. A nice slant pattern by Geronimo. Allison gets him inside Tampa Bay territory. First down at the 44. Corral back to pass. Throws complete to Gage. And he's inside the 40 yard line. Now on third and three. Out of the shotgun, Corral. Throws, and it's incomplete. He tried to get that one out to Allison and was just a little bit too far outside. Now Brady back to pass. Throws complete to Miller, and he is tackled at the 23. First down, Tampa Bay. Back to pass again. The throw over the middle, complete. Tyler Johnson takes it outside the 35 yard line for a first down at the 37. On second and eight, a play action pass. Brady throws way in the backfield to rookie Cole Turner and he is tackled by Mike Hughes. Now after an offside penalty, it's third and 12, and it's incomplete as well. So the ball goes back to the Falcons. At the 19-yard line. Cook takes it over the left side, out past the 20-yard line. And now on third and three, 
Back to pass, Corral throws it and it's complete to Pitts, out of bounds at the 34. First down, Falcons. Cook takes it to the left again and is hit hard. Carl Nassib made the hit and Cook has been taken back to the locker room. That's complete for a first down to Kyle Pitts. But it remains to be seen. We'll get a report on that Cook injury and see how bad that really is. Now on third and four, out of the shotgun, Corral throws, and it's broken up. Vita Vea getting a paw on that ball. And now the Bucks have another chance. Complete out to Gronkowski. Takes it outside the 25 for a seven yard pickup, and that brings us to the two minute warning. Now third and one. Brady back to pass. Williams with the first down reception and takes it out past the 35 to the 38. First down and it's Scotty Miller inside, inside plus territory with a minute left to go and another first down for Williams making the catch inside the 40. Second and 10, and down goes Brady. Dante Fowler takes him down back at the 49. Third and 21, Brady heaves it, and it's incomplete, throws it into triple coverage. Fortunate that wasn't intercepted, but it probably wouldn't have done anything anyway because it's halftime. And that means an update from Eurocat Baby. Welcome to the Toyota Halftime Report. We'll get you back to the action in Atlanta in a moment. Atlanta fans will have a bittersweet reaction to this. Halfback James Cook suffered an abdominal tear, and while that is bad news, it could have been so much worse. If you take a look at that footage, Cook was the victim of a vicious hit and could have been sidelined for a lot longer than the three to four weeks that's projected at this time. In the meantime, it'll be up to Bryce Love and Jerrion Ely to fill in during that time. Love has been a little vocal about getting a little more playing time, and well, now is his shot. Let's hope that he can shine with this opportunity. In other action here in the NFC South, Desmond Ritter has taken the Saints into Baltimore already throwing for two touchdowns and an interception. He's about to take New Orleans into halftime with a 17-3 lead. Whoa, we've just found out that Carolina Panther halfback Christian McCaffrey has suffered a complete PCL tear and will be out for the remainder of the season. That means Carolina will have some big decisions ahead. Do they go with either Daryl Henderson or Chuba Hubbard as their primary back? Or do they try something else to get a first string back on the roster? Things could get interesting in Charlotte. Here in Atlanta, we have a defensive battle going on. Both offenses seem to be moving the ball a little bit, but neither are punching the ball in the end zone. Will that change in the second half? Stay with us to find out, because we'll be right back. Welcome back to Mercedes-Benz Stadium here in Atlanta. We have ourselves a different game than what we expected so far. A defensive battle has been the story so far, with neither team breaching the 150-yard mark on offense. Will we see some scoring in the second half? Let's find out if either team has adjusted and changed their game plan just a bit. From their own 25-yard line, the Buccaneers with Brady under center. And he hands it off to Fournette, and he gets a hole, takes it all the way out past the 40-yard line for a first down at the 42. What a nice way to start out the second half. And a play-action pass this time complete, and that is a repeat of 
uh, almost the same play to Mike Evans that was made in the first half. It was successful then, and it was successful just then as well. This one complete to Gronk for a nine-yard pickup. Third and one at the 32, and it's incomplete intended for Gronk, and now they're going for it on fourth down. This time, Gronk has the completion and a first down inside the 28. Now a play action pass. This complete Johnson with the grab at the 25. Second and six. And another play action pass. This is complete to Mike Evans. The third completion to him on the same play. The Falcons just don't have an answer for that play. Go from the five yard line up the middle and Leonard Fournette goes into the end zone for a Tampa Bay score. So with the extra point, that makes it 10 to three. The Buccaneers are on top. Corral under center, a short drop, throw and a completion to Christian Kirk outside the 35 for a first down. Now out of the eye. Play action pass and it's complete to Pitts. Tackled in plus territory at the 43. Now first and 10 out of the shotgun. Corral throws complete to Kirk again and are they gonna give him the first down? Yes, they do at the 33. Out of the eye formation, the ball is given to Bryce Love and he is gone. Touchdown for number 33 from the 33. A 33 yard touchdown and everything is coming up 33. And that will tie up this football game at 10 apiece. Now will Tampa Bay be able to Answer in return. Out of the shotgun, Brady throw over the middle. Gronkowski first down at the 36. Under center. Fake handoff. Brady with all day in the backfield and that one's complete to Scotty Miller, but the same play that Atlanta is having real trouble Defending, Brady with another throw. Miller, first down at the 30 yard line. Now on second and nine. A short drop for Brady and a quick throw out to Mike Evans. And that one is a first down as well inside the 20. Play action pass all day long to throw it. Finally finds Jack Doyle for an eight yard pickup and Justin Matabike is down. At least he's on the sideline being attended to. So hopefully he's going to be okay. Brady back throws complete over the middle to Mike Evans inside the five. So on first and goal from the two, Fournette takes it into the end zone. Touchdown, Buccaneers. A straightforward power run, and Fournette takes it into the end zone, gives Tampa Bay a seven-point lead, 17 to 10. Now Corral with the completion out at the 27. Five yard pickup. Jerry and Ely with the carry this time. Gets the first down out past the 30 to almost the 35. An eight yard pickup. And they give him the 35 yard line. Love with the carry this time. He takes it out to the 40. Another five yard pickup for the rushing game of the Falcons. Love with another carry up the middle. 
Did they give him the first down? No, it's third in inches. So Corral throws complete to Gage, and he's inside Buccaneer territory. Jonah Williams is being attended to on the sideline by the Falcons training staff. After a holding penalty, second and 16, down goes Corral and another sack recorded by Joe Tryon Shoyanka. That brings us to the end of the third quarter with the Buccaneers leading 17 to 10. Corral back to pass, throws over the middle, incomplete intended for Kirk. Now the Buccaneers from the 20 yard line. Complete out to Scotty Miller, has the first down and more out to the 34. Brady out of the shotgun. Backs up to pass, throws complete. Johnson with the first down out past the 45 to the 47. Brady on a bootleg pass, throws it out to Jack Doyle, first down, and he's finally pushed out of bounds at the 40-yard line on second and seven. The pass is complete to Johnson. He's tackled at the 20-yard line, another first down for Tampa Bay. They give him the 19-yard line. Brady all alone in the backfield, and he is sacked. First hit by Fowler, and then finished off by Evans for a 15-yard loss. Now on second and 25. Brady pass and is sacked again. This time Reed gets to him. Another Nine yards back in, <laughs> well, the Buccaneers are going backwards in big time. And the pass incomplete, and they have to punt. Now the Falcons from their own 20. On second and 10, Corral with all day to throw it and runs out of time. Tryon Shoyanka with another sack. And he is definitely turning out to be a problem for this offensive line. Oh, Devin White almost with the interception. But the Buccaneers get it back. And in great field position, Gronkowski makes the catch and is inside the 40-yard line for a nine-yard pickup. Third and one. Brady back to pass, completes it to Johnson inside the 25 to the 21 yard line. The Buccaneers are back in business again inside the red zone, second and seven. Fake handoff and a completion to Gronk. He's got the first down, no, it's third and inches at the 11, so the pass and Williams catches it, is inside the five yard line and it's first and goal. Now second and goal, under center, Brady dropping back and can't find anybody open, throws it through the back of the end zone. Third and goal from the shotgun, the pass to Scotty Miller, touchdown. Buccaneers. Miller with a very simple slant pattern. Burrow just couldn't keep up with him. And the catch is made for the touchdown. The Buccaneers have taken a two touchdown lead. A lot of work for the Falcons to do. Corral throws it and it's complete to Kirk on the sideline. First and 10 Falcons at their own 39. Now the handoff. Love with a four yard gain up the middle. Second and six out of the shotgun. Corral back to pass, throws. 
short and complete to Ely. And he has a nine yard pickup for a first down. Now on third and nine. The pass short to Hurst and doesn't even come close to the marker. And a fourth and seven, the Falcons are going for it. The pass complete to Kirk. Did he make the first down marker? No. They're not going to give it to him. Stopped by Jamel Dean. And with this possession, the Buccaneers have played right, could take this victory out of Atlanta. Fournette up the middle. Atlanta takes a timeout. Brady under center, hands it off. No, he passes the ball out to Fournette, out of bounds. Oops, that had to be a mistake. And that brings us to the two minute warning. Second and eight, and Fournette up the middle again. And Gronkowski is down. Uh, but he looks to be okay on the sideline. Third and four. A minute 53 left. And Fournette takes it up the middle, and he has the first down. And that should really do it. The Buccaneers in the victory formation. And that is all. Unfortunately, We've finally seen Matt Corral lose his first professional game today. Although he played a respectable game and didn't make any real glaring mistakes that I could tell, he just couldn't take the offense to the end zone. The Falcons' one lone touchdown was a 33-yard scamper by Bryce Love that pulled them even with the Bucks. And then the GOAT got busy. <laughs> he put the ball in the air 55 times in this game for 360 yards. He only threw one passing touchdown, but Leonard Fournette was able to punch the ball in for the score on the other two end zone trips. I think that almost a bigger issue for the Falcons is the loss of James Cook for the next four weeks. Unless Bryce Love is able to pick up the slack, there's going to be serious pressure on Matt Corral to get the ball down the field. One thing that is kind of asserting itself is the passing offense of both the Falcons and the Bucks. We have the number one and number two passing yard leaders in the league with Brady edging out the kid, but it would seem that through three games anyway, opposing defenses are going to develop a game plan to stop these passing attacks. That looks to be a bigger issue for the Falcons since their superstar running back is now out of action. I think it'll be really interesting to see how Love fills in because he had a good game today per carry average-wise which might help in getting Atlanta to a better balanced offense. Well, on the defensive side of things, it just seemed that Brady was picking apart this defensive secondary. The pressure seemed to be there, but all you have to do is give a guy like Tom Brady a very small window, and he can take advantage of that in a hurry. Up next is a trip to Cleveland to take on the Browns. Now the Browns are proving to be very solid in the run game on both offense and defense. So passing the ball on offense may be the better option. And since that is one of Atlanta's strengths, it might be advantageous to work that direction. Defensively, the Falcons are going to need to contain the tandem of Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt, both of which are very good backs and probably why Cleveland has the number five rushing game in the NFL. This should be a good one to see. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of the Atlanta Falcons franchise on the MMC Broadcasting Network. 
We were questioning the challenge that Philly gave Atlanta a couple weeks ago and should have been a little more prepared for the GOAT today. A loss is now in the books, and it's up to Bryce Love to help the Falcons bounce back against the Browns in the home of the Dog Pound. Almost more important than that, can Matt Corral make a strong comeback after his first loss here in the NFL? To find out, be with us when South collides with North in a cross-conference showdown in First Energy Stadium. Until then, for Eurocat Baby and the rest of the crew, this is Husker Eurocat saying so long for now and have a good day, everyone.